The aftermath of the NSAS protest no doubt left many with sad tales following the wanton destruction of property that trailed the nationwide demonstration against police brutality in October 2020. Four months after, a form of reprieve seemed to be coming the way of some victims of police brutality. The Lagos State Judicial Panel recently awarded compensation to some victims. Among those who received compensation of 10 million naira was Adebayo Abayomi for the extrajudicial killing of his mother, Kudirat Abayomi, and Hannah Olubodi, who was shot by a police officer. In Edo State, a dismissed police officer, Joseph Omotosho, attached to the defunct Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, and four others fingered in the killing of Benson Obode, a car dealer five years ago, are now to die by hanging or chemical infusion after a high court of justice sitting in Ibini found them guilty of murder. Defendants, all in the rank of police corporals, had arrested the deceased on allegation of stealing. He was taken to the Do State CID in Bini, where the attempt to extract a confession from him by torture led to his death on May 21st, 2015. The defendants thereafter deposited the corpse at the morgue in Central Hospital Bini and tagged the corpse by a wrong name, Benson Ago. It, however, took several months before the family of the deceased could trace the corpse. Still on the call for police reforms, you may have seen how dilapidated police staff quarters are. Possibly have heard how horrible the Nigerian police cells can be. Many Nigerians were shocked when a documentary showing the deplorable state of the Nigerian Police Training College went viral some years ago. It was hard to believe that people who will later graduate to become policemen and women that Nigerians will rely on to serve and protect them could pass through such dehumanization as the reality of an average policeman on the streets has not changed. From poor remuneration to welfare and lack of adequate training, how empowered is the Nigerian police to be alive to its responsibility? And from the emergence and existence of the Nigerian policing system, the Nigerian police has come a long way. Uh, it has come a long way in the sense that uh, the police is one of the oldest forces in Nigeria. Now, uh, we cannot have a policing system that is over uh, 70 years uh, after 1930 and uh, over 100 years during the colonial era. Uh, for me, I think uh, our policing system, we have issues with our policing system and that is just the truth. I remember that I visited uh, a police station at one time to see a friend. Uh, while I was there, I think uh, uh, electricity went off, Nepal went off and uh, everybody put on their chain. And it's as if the state was under attack because I was hearing different sound like gunshots. This was a cry of generators. And I asked, why every department with their generators? And they told me uh, they are the one funding their uh, generator. They are the one taking charge of generator. How did we arrive at a state whereby a policeman will be paying money to fund his generator, to fund his air condition, to get his table? Those are erroneous aspects of policing. And that is why we will, we will continue to experience uh, police uh, corruption. Because if I use my own funds to get a gen, definitely I will get my funds back. Except maybe I'm just being sacrificial, which is very rare. For me, I want the Nigerian police to look into their policing system. All the police departments must be well taken care of. Fundings must get to DPOs. Fundings must get to area commanders. Fundings must get to AIGs. Funding must get to CPs. Allocated properly. Because if you have a situation whereby the Nigerian police are funding uh, their own operations with their own money, is an operational sabotage. That is an error on itself. So, uh, uh, that aside, uh, the uh, Nigerian police also needs to migrate uh, from paper policing to uh, uh, technological based policing. You know, uh, when you go to any police station, you think you are in a secondary school, in a primary school. Lots of books are piled up, papers and everything. You, we need to go into data, we need to go into technology. You know, let's every, if you can put my name in a police station and have my crime data, you understand? We should have a crime data whereby whoever commits a crime will go into that data and you can assess that person anywhere in Nigeria.
according to Frederick Hesberg, he says uh, uh, two roles play, uh, motivations and hygiene plays in any given environment. What are the hygienes? What are the motivations? Now, when you go to our, some of our police so officers, they stay in a self-rented apartment. I don't know how we arrive at that stage. A lot of them pay for their rent in a civil uh, uh, environment, you go to the police barrack. The police barrack is a total mess. You are a journalist, go to uh, 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 the police barrack opposite Area F. You can't put a British dog there, he will die before seven days. Everywhere is messed up, no, uh, smelling environment. These are people that put their life on the line to survive, for us to, be, for us to survive. We must look at a new uh, dimension of our policy system. We must look at their hygiene. We must look at their dressing, their uniforms. Do they buy uniform for themselves? Yes, they do buy uniform for themselves. They buy boots for themselves. In the exception of those newly, just ones that pass out newly, police officers buy boots for themselves. What happened? Government are allocating those uniform and boots free of charge. Because why will I buy uniform and boots to serve my country? That is not done. It's even happening in the military where some soldiers buy boots for themselves. These are issues that our government needs to set a board of inquiry to inquire how our money are being spent in the area of uh, 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 police kits and uh, uh, their, their housing. It is very important. We must look at those things so that these guys, when they wake up in the morning, they will embrace their work happily. And, uh, engage their duty happily and go back home and rest in a peaceful place. You can't have a very tough day, put your life at risk, and at the end of the day, you are sleeping in a smelling barrack, smell, sleeping in a, in a smelling base. That is very, very wrong. So the problem of the police is the police leadership. I think for me, if I have the powers, I will hold the Nigerian police uh, uh, leaders from 19, 1960 to 2021 because they need to be accountable. And that is why we must have this very clear. It doesn't mean that you are an ex-IGP, you, you cannot be held accountable. We must call people back to come and account for their services to Nigeria. You can't just come and mess up and go. No, we must look into accountability. When we start looking into accountability, holding police officers accountable, holding uh, uh, police uh, uh, officers uh, accountable for uh, the welfare of their men, Nigeria will continue to be experiencing a high state of insecurity because when we will take care of our security professionals, our security agents, they will be able to discharge their duty effectively and Nigeria will definitely be a better place. Now let's bring you other crime news making incidents. In recent times, some of Nigeria's major highways have been in the news for all the bad reasons. No more are Nigerians dealing with the bad state of the roads, but now robbery and kidnapping are the order of the day. Fresh in the memory of many is the story of a United States-based returnee who was waylaid and kidnapped on the highway on his way to Lagos to board his flight back to the United States. To help curb the increasing spate of kidnapping, the federal government says plans are in top gear to install closed circuit television across the major highways. Wilson Esamode is the national president of Licensed Private Security Practitioners of Nigeria, while Tanwa Ashiru is an intelligence and security expert. They described the idea as laudable, but however raised concerns on factors to be considered before installing security surveillance system on the country's highways. It's done in other parts of the world, so we can also do it. But what we are saying is, because we have a very poor identity management system. Up to now as I speak, we don't have that effective database management system. Uh, sometimes these technologies don't, it's not very effective in properly identifying the person. So in essence, it may see my face and then when you tell it, run a recognition, have we seen this person's face before? Then it could pull up your face and say, hey, uh, you know, it looks just like this other person, but then we're not the same people. Now, you should have analysts in the back end that are actually reviewing the footage. Previous administrations had awarded contracts for installation of CCTV in strategic points in two major cities of Abuja and Lagos. The contract, which was awarded to a Chinese firm for $470 million under the Omaru Yaradua's regime, was alleged to have been increased by President Goodluck Jonathan. And the worst part is that we are actually servicing the debt. Now, the findings of the investigations have not been publicly shared, but what we do know is that nobody has actually been convicted or has actually been uh, persecuted for not completing this project. Them not do it with faceless companies that have no offices. That when there's a problem, you cannot, you cannot trace them. And they let the government of the day not 
not make it turn it into politics. Because what happens is a politician will go and get the contract. Someone that doesn't know anything about cameras will get the contract and get someone, somebody from outside the country. The project was funded through $600 million credit facility. However, Nigeria Communications Satellite Limited, one of those involved in the project, said there was misconception on the part of the public as the project had five components and CCTV was less than 15% of the entire project. A revisit and resuscitation of the 2010 project by the present government will save the nation revenue loss and also help security agencies fight insecurity across the country. And that's Crime Watch this week. You can join us on all our social media platforms. It's coming up on your screen now. I'm Ivy Kanu, but before we go, let's leave you with these quotes.